Jennifer Gabriz has studied communication studies and landscape architecture. She has expertise in digital media and communication technologies, including the materiality of these devices and citizen sensing. She also focuses on environmental change and climate change, as well as transdisciplinarity and emerging modes of practice. Gabriz is likely to have a good handle on what our cities will be like in the future. I agree. That statement seems accurate. Electronic waste is beginning to be a considerable topic of concern, and the EU has led the way in this respect by um, spearheading the initiatives of waste, electrical, electronic equipment, and also the restriction of certain hazardous substances in electronic devices. But still, a lot of work remains to be done in addressing electronic waste, and this is something that should encompass both industry and academia and government, as well as creative practitioners who can aid in thinking about the design and making, as well as repairing of devices. Obsolescence is something that's part of the networks and systems of electronics. It's not just down to individual devices, but in thinking about obsolescence, you need to think about much wider systems of compatibility and how to make technologies potentially endure um, in ways that they don't already. Information city is a term that exists probably within a family of terms from smart city to digital city and more. Um, and it's something that describes at once how cities become intelligent through digital technologies and also the ways in which cities are generative of information and data. So in this sense, there's a kind of question about what will be done with all of the data that's generated from information cities. Environmental data is used across different sectors, from environmental scientists attempting to study environmental change and influence policy, to citizen sensing groups and creative practitioners who are now collecting increasing amounts of environmental data and using that in some ways to undertake grassroots science, to understand more about their environments and potentially affect how those environments are actually lived in. So this is particularly relevant in things like looking at air quality, for instance, and thinking about how to address air pollution and its effect on people who may suffer from asthma. Many of the proposals for smart cities are focused on efficiency and resource savings, from everything to do with GPS, parking, to smart homes and monitoring energy. There's a whole set of ways in which digital technologies are imagined to be both time and resource saving devices. But within this set of developments, new kinds of questions emerge about the modes of governance that new technologies then give rise to, where we're seeing a situation where Google and Cisco may have more input into how homes and urban environments function than local governments do. So in this area, I've coined uh, or adapted a term called environmentality from the French theorist Michel Foucault to talk about the ways in which environment, environmental technologies become ways of exercising governance within urban spaces. So I think a lot of questions emerge there about how these new operators, these new technological operators, become, in a sense, agents of governance. If I had to choose one science fiction film that I think would best represent the city of the future, it would probably be WALL-E, which is a, um, an animation film about a robot who lives, in, um, lives on Earth, which has basically become a, a waste dump and is largely uninhabitable for humans. And humans have jettisoned themselves away to a spaceship, and this robot remains on Earth and reuses all of the abandoned and obsolete devices and repairs them for new uses. So I think there's a lot of kind of um, imagining in that scenario, and also obviously a kind of uh, caution about where all our devices and use of our devices will lead us. Cities are always in the process of being built, which may actually change the way that we think about cities, not as projects of civic planning, but as spatial aggregations of data. So in this sense, GPS uh, data about where people are congregating for shopping or for dwelling may actually change how we choose to resource cities or to distribute different zones of activity. 
In relation to digital technologies, I would like to paraphrase Catherine Hales, who says that our futures are not something to be found out or discovered once we get there, but are actually things that we're making commitments to now through our values and allegiances in the present. Access to citizen sensing technologies are often seen as tools of democratic engagement, but still questions emerge here as to how these generate alternative practices and ways of life in relation to environmental change.